Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Rose Gerber. I'm the Director of Patient Advocacy and Education for the Community Oncology Alliance. As I do with every, mo every month, I like to start off by giving you two high-level updates. And the first update that I have is a Save the Date update. On September 28th, we are hosting our CPAN Virtual Advocacy Summit. And you can expect a afternoon, a day full of great information, hearing from the top healthcare experts uh, who are going to bring us all the latest issues that impact patient care. <clears throat> also, I wanted to remind you to visit COA's website and CPAN's website. That is where we have daily breaking news, including information on the, a couple of words some of you may or may not be familiar with, and this is the enhanced a care model, the enhanced oncology care model. Every month I have the honor of introducing you to very special guests and very special organizations. And this month is no different. Our special guest is Jill Ponder, RN, Vice President of the National Organization for Rare Diseases. And you're gonna learn a lot of things from Jill today. And one of the many things you're gonna learn is that rare diseases, rare disorders are not so rare. Some of you may have heard of this organization. Uh, many of you may have not. The first time that I heard of NORD was over a decade ago when I was first diagnosed with cancer. And as I've shared with many of you, when I was diagnosed with, can with cancer as a young mother, I was very, very private by choice. I like to say I wasn't hiding anything. I was just private. Um, and it was an, at a moment during my soccer mom years when I was on the field and I shared this information with the fellow soccer mom. And in an effort to comfort me and offer me hope, uh, she mentioned to me that she worked for an organization called NORD, and of course, I'd never heard of it. I really hadn't heard of any really cancer organizations other than the major ones at that time. NORD is major, but I just wasn't in my radar at that time. And um, the acronym always stuck with me, NORD, and I went on to learn that they have been doing incredible work and in offering not only hope, but most importantly, resources uh, to support not only cancer patients, but patients of, of many different disease and disorder types. So it's gonna be a very interesting conversation today. And Jill is gonna, we're all gonna leave a little more educated, more compassionate and more informed about where to go for resources. Um, as you can see today, when she's going through those resources, she's also gonna give us insight into NORD's Rare Cancer Coalition. Uh, next slide, please. Here's that date. So we are gonna have more information on our website. Uh, so keep visiting, but for those of you that like to do screenshots or use your phone, Go ahead and take a picture so that you definitely remember the date. Next slide, please. Sometimes there's a little technical difficulty, but if we can get to the next slide. And now it is my pleasure to welcome Jill Pollinger. Jill, thank you so much for being with us today. We hope to learn a lot from you and the stage is yours. Thank you, Rose. I'd like to thank both you and the Community Oncology Alliance Patient Advocacy Network for the invitation to speak with you today and thank everybody for joining in. I'm truly honored to have the opportunity to participate in the CPAN Advocacy Chat Series. And please feel free to enter any questions that you may have into the chat and we will address those at the end of the program. So please feel free. As Rose mentioned, I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for many years. And over the years, I think, hmm, I think I've seen and heard it all. And one of those things that I've always heard is if you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. In a nutshell, what that means is when you're assessing a patient, when you're talking to individuals, usually what you're seeing is that which is most common, except sometimes. Sometimes those hoofbeats are a zebra, and sometimes what we're seeing is not common or usual or expected. Sometimes it's rare. And in case you didn't know, the zebra is the official mascot of rare. So I think for many, the term rare means eh, it's something we're not going to encounter, or it doesn't apply to me. It doesn't apply to anybody that I know. But with 7,000 rare diseases affecting 25 to 30 million individuals in the United States, rare isn't really all that rare. And when I think back over the course of my career and I think about the rare individuals and families I've encountered, whether it's a child with Duchenne muscular dystrophy 
or the first patient I ever had who had ALS, the adolescent with cystic fibrosis, the patient with clear cell sarcoma, Wilms tumor, a rare seizure disorder. I think too about my own family and how rare has impacted me. When my husband was diagnosed several years ago with renal cell carcinoma, who knew that was rare? And yet it is. When I think about my nephew with FA FAP and desmoid tumor, who would think that you'd be impacted by a rare diagnosis? That happens to other people. It doesn't touch me. It doesn't touch people that we know. I'm sure many of you listening have been surprised or touched by a rare diagnosis. Rare is really not all that rare. It touches so many. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about NORD and the history of rare. If we look at a little bit of history of rare, it goes like this. In the late 1970s and early 80s, patients and families living with rare diseases really felt alone and forgotten. Very little was being done to study these diseases or to develop treatments. Leaders of several rare disease patient organizations formed an ad hoc coalition to focus attention on this problem. The coalition ultimately became NORD and was instrumental in the Orphan Drug Act of 1983, which created financial incentives for the development of treatments for rare diseases. Since then, NORD has served as a hub for the rare disease community, leading efforts to connect patients and patient organizations and other stakeholders, all driving progress for the rare community. At NORD, we believe that all people living with a rare diagnosis have a fundamental right to their best health and well being. And with that belief as our guide, we advocate for solutions that address their complex issues and needs. Next slide. I have the pleasure and privilege of leading NORD's patient services team. This team is comprised of patient assistance, information and resource services, and clinical trial support. We're a team of 25, and our focus is solely on serving and supporting the rare disease community. For nearly 40 years, NORD's programs and services have assisted the rare disease community in overcoming obstacles to care and access to care. We know sometimes what patients need the most are resources and information. And we manage inquiries for financial assistance, diagnosis information, finding specialists, centers of excellence, navigating insurance, and other guidance, direction, and resources. Next slide. NORD has a dedicated communication center to enable efficient communication by phone, fax, and email. It enables point of contact service. So when you or your family call us, whoever answers the phone is able to assist. Our team is available Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Fridays till 6 p.m. Small caveat there, we have summer hours. So right now on Fridays, we're available till 3 p.m. But if you do leave us a message, we re respond to that message at worst next business day. Typically it's within hours. Oh. To give you some idea of the breadth of NORD patient services, last year we assisted 9,951 individuals and provided nearly $36 million in financial support. We answered just shy of 69,000 calls and 66,000 emails. Yeah. When you think your inbox is bad, <laughs> think about what ours looks like. But these are just numbers. And numbers are not why we do what we do. Next slide. This is our why. This is why we do what we do. It's about individuals, it's about patients, it's about families. It's about those who love and care for those patients and families. Next slide. 
I want to talk a little bit about Nord's Rare Cancer Coalition. When you think that approximately one in five people living with cancer in the United States are in fact diagnosed with a rare cancer and that all pediatric cancers are rare, you can understand the importance of this coalition. Nord's Rare Cancer Coalition is comprised of more than two dozen rare cancer patient advocacy organizations, all Nord member organizations. And these coalition leaders are collaborating on issues facing the greater rare cancer community. The network opportunities, information sharing, interdisciplinary educational and CME programs have truly been a force for the rare cancer community. The Rare Cancer Coalition officially launched in 2018 and has had an impactful presence in both the rare and oncology space ever since. Whether it's exhibiting at ASCO or launching a collaboration with the Department of Defense peer-reviewed cancer research program under the Congressionally Directed Medical Research Program, the RCC has been a powerful advocate for rare cancer research funding and advances. In 2019, for the first time, a panel dedicated to rare cancers was held at the National Institutes of Health Rare Disease Day, with the Rare Cancer Coalition leadership speaking on the panel, and speaking too at World Orphan Drug Congress on several panels. Nord's Rare Cancer Coalition launched the, rare, the first Rare Cancer Day, a day devoted to raising awareness about rare, rare cancers. It's observed on September 30th, and the focus is on raising awareness of the challenges and emerging trends in the rare cancer space and rare cancer treatment. Now, Rare Cancer Day is not only for those who have a rare cancer diagnosis, it's also for those who care for them. It's a day of support, advocacy, and awareness. In 2020, the coalition secured representation at a special stakeholder meeting of the Department of Defense regarding its congressional directed medical research funding. This works to direct, direct funding for new research funding for rare cancers. So you can understand this has a critical role in making sure we're addressing those aspects that are so critical to advancing rare cancer concerns. The RCC has been recognized by patients, clinicians, researchers, and industry for its impactful advocacy work on behalf of the rare cancer community. Next slide. Let's talk a little bit about resources. Nord's website, rarediseases.org, has a plethora of resources for patients, families, patient organizations, advocacy groups, clinicians, and researchers. The website provides information and resources encompassing a variety of topics and needs. At the end of 2021, Nord launched in its inaugural Centers of Excellence Recognition Program. Nord recognized 31 centers of excellence throughout the United States. And in partnership with these centers, Nord is working to advance the needs and care of the rare cancer community. The Nord COE program brings together teams of clinical experts in a nationwide network of cutting edge facilities with the goal to provide standards of specialized care and disease management for people living with rare diagnoses and their family. Think about the importance for this coordinated care, this specialization for the rare cancer community. Joe, I since you have this uh, screenshot up, uh, you mentioned caregivers, which I think is really important that you include the caregivers in the rare in your rare cancer day. Can you talk, and I see a listing here, can you talk a little bit about why caregivers are so important and what resources you provide for the, care, for the caregivers? Thanks, Rose. It is critically important. Every day we talk about and talk to patients who have rare diagnoses, but when you think about it, 
there is a loved one, a significant other, there's a caregiver that is providing that support, both behind the scenes and on a daily nonstop basis. So if we don't support those caregivers, how can they continue to do all that they do? And so Nord recognizes this. And so from our rare caregiver respite program to our rare disease educational support program, these provide critical support resources for these caregivers. And is this, uh, and, and by the way, you have an absolutely incredible website. I know that I did a deep dive into it um, several times. Is this information all available on the website? Because it is very content heavy, which is fabulous. Yeah. But to kind of guide our listeners and viewers, uh, or even people who are going to view it later, where is that information available? Is it like in the sub menus? Do, should they make sure. a phone call? What's the best way to do it? Thanks, Rose. So it, uh, it is a robust website. Um, and actually, the website will have a new feel and look to it in the near future. Easiest way to find anything is go into that search box in the okay. top. Type in caregiver, type in respite, type okay. in the diagnosis you're looking for information for, and that will direct you. So, for example, if you type in clear cell sarcoma, it will take you to our rare disease database and okay. you'll find information there. Then when you scroll down and look at the diagnosis, you'll see information about registry that's available. You'll see member orgs. You'll see a link to patient assistance programs. So it really will take you step by step. Okay. Don't be overwhelmed. Yeah. And if you feel overwhelmed, reach out to us. Yeah. We have individuals through our communication center who can respond to your questions, whether by phone or email. We are here That's and great. we want to be that resource for you. Thank you. Sure. So I want to go back to the COEs for a minute because oftentimes what we're asked about is how do I find a caregiver? How do I find a medical home? for my diagnosis. And so when you look at COEs and you look at- oh, excuse me, can you explain what you mean with that acronym, COE? Sure, COE stands for Center of Excellence. Right. And so when you're talking about who's going to provide your care, how are you going to build your care team? We all are looking for experts in that space. And when you're rare, typically the person who's on the corner or who's closest to you or show, who shows up first when you do your, who's in my network for insurance. That may or may not be the first point of contact for you. And so when we look at centers of excellence or COEs, we really can look at that collaborative approach. And this may be a place for you to out, outreach to enable your own caregiver who may be in your neighborhood to have those best practices, those standards of care, and really be able to quarterback with you your treatment and the approach to that treatment and that approach to really multi-specialty clinical care. What's really unique about NORD's COE program, it is the first ever designation program dedicated to all rare diseases and the patients impacted by them. So the centers that form those COEs, that COE network, work in partnership to share expertise, to advance education, to define standards and protocols and shape what rare disease care will look like so that you can access the best care, the best standards, and to receive assistance in that diagnostic journey and to find the best complex care for your complex needs. I want to talk for a minute about Nord's policy and advocacy team because that's really critical. It really is critical when you look at a high level, overarching, advancing the needs for the rare cancer and rare disease space. So our policy and advocacy team work to identify, define, and advocate for critical legislation and regulation at the federal and state levels that address the unique needs of 30 million Americans living with rare diseases and their families. We have a dedicated educational initiatives team 
and they work to develop educational resources for the rare disease community. We have two big events a year, our Living Rare, Living Stronger Patient and Family Forum, which we just concluded in Cleveland recently. Right. And upcoming in October is our summit, the Rare Disease Orphan Breakthrough Summit. This work that the educational initiatives team does includes partnerships and programs to empower patients and their families to take an active role in managing their health and to live their best rare lives. We seek to inform, engage, not only individuals who are living and working in this space, but the next generation, students who may be pursuing a healthcare career or students who are interested in advancing rare diseases and rare care. We have a dedicated research department and we support the rare disease community by providing support, tools and expertise that enable patient advocacy groups to increase their engagement and capacity for research. Specifically, the team administers research grants, supports patient advocacy groups in collecting natural history data on its I Am Rare platform and participates in FDA grants to develop clinical outcome assessments and to promote data standardization. Research in the rare disease space is a little bit different than it is in, I hesitate to say more common diseases, but when you think about how you think about the numbers in diabetes or heart disease, those numbers are much greater. Yes. So when we look at outcomes and we look at designing studies specific to rare, we understand that the outcomes are a little bit different. The access is a little bit different. And so we work to develop innovative study designs. Jill, also, uh, since you're speaking about research, that, that's an area that's very um, dear to my heart. And in one of your earlier slides, you talked about clinical trials, and you also have clinical trials noted here. And currently, in addition to health equity, clinical trials is a very, it's a top three hot topic for all advocacy groups, and it's very important for cancer patients. Can you talk about the clinical trial efforts that you do? Again, it's hard for patients to find trials. And then based on what you shared with us today, being a rare disease patient, how do, how do patients find your organization? And tell us about how they find clinical trials. What's that process like? Sure, thanks. So on NORD's website, you will see some clinical trials that are listed specific for the rare disease space. If you call NORD and you speak to our information and resource specialist team, we can help to navigate clinicaltrials.gov. Clinicaltrials.gov is a really robust website. Yes, yes, it is. That said, it's sometimes hard to interpret. Mm -hmm. We have a team who are dedicated to helping you to navigate that and to help you to interpret that and find that. We're not going to be able to refer you to a trial. That wouldn't be our role, but we can okay. help you to understand. We can also help you to ask the right questions to your clinician, because sometimes the conversation about clinical trials doesn't occur at the beginning when you're first diagnosed. Right. And so it is incumbent upon you if that's something that's of interest or if that's something that is pertinent to you for you to drive that conversation with your own clinician and say, what trials are out there? Right. Do I qualify? What are your thoughts about when I might be a candidate for a clinical trial? Or are there robust standards of care with, with terrific efficacy so that we don't wanna be talking about that at this point? And for each individual, that conversation is going to be different. Thank you. And for those of you who may or may not be familiar with clinicaltrials.gov, it, it's a website and it's very overwhelming. There's great information. So Jill, this is, you're actually one of the first individuals that I've spoken to, you know, national advocacy leader that's mentioned that you have na assistance navigating the site uh, because I've been on different advisory boards and consultant type work. And that's just an ongoing issue is that it, it's great information, but to a person who's not an advanced advocate who hasn't gone through science-based training. And actually, if you're a patient, it's just very overwhelming. Um, it's really impressive that your organization is providing that assistance with navigating that that's kudos to you that's the first i've heard of that thanks 
Let's go to the next slide. I want to talk about some more resources. At Nord, we are really honored to partner with the Rare community. It's what we do and it's who we are. And so I really encourage you to connect with the Rare Cancer Coalition, whether it's through our website or via the contact information I've included here on this slide. This is a partner. This is an advocacy partner for each and every Rare Cancer patient. And now I realize it's only July and September 30th, which is Rare Cancer Day, it is just around the corner. And as advocates, this day really is devoted to shining a light on rare cancers and the issues of people living with them and the issues that we face daily. This is an important advocacy opportunity. Mark the date, September 30th. It's going to come up quicker than you think. And Jill, you could, I'd be happy, uh, you know, as, as to, to provide value to our own participants uh, to share that information. So, you know, feel free to send that to me as well once all your, you know, your flyers and documents and links are ready. And I'm going to take a look. It looks like we have a couple of questions. We can keep chatting, Jill. <laughs> sure. Okay. So when I think about advocacy, I really think about engagement. And it's why we wanted to make sure to leave time for some questions at the end. Because when I think about advocacy, I do think about engagement. And when I think about engagement, it's engagement that really gives voice to patients, families, and caregivers. Engagement that ensures patient-centric care, patient-centric studies, patient-centric drug development, and engagement that's supportive of healthcare coverage and equity. So NORD will, as we have for nearly 40 years, continue to connect with and advocate for and to serve the rare community. At Nord, we say, alone we are rare, together we are strong. That's, that's a beautiful saying. Uh, I, I want to read a comment that we got um, and just let you, you know, comment on it. Sure. Uh, this is just an FYI. The National Library of Medicine approached Nord to get the word out about their effort to recruit patients, caregivers, and healthcare providers to give feedback as part of the clinicaltrials.gov modernization effort. Nord will share how to get involved this week. So that, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And if anybody has, uh, we have a couple a couple more minutes. If any in, any of our participants uh, have questions or comments, and Jill, you can keep chatting. <laughs> sure. Well, you know, at this point, I'd really just like to thank the Community Oncology Alliance Patient Advocacy Network and all of you. And let's take some of those questions, Rose. I think you you had indicated that there are a few out there. Yeah. So other than the one comment I just gave you, um, I just want to mention if you could it's a comment mainly for our listeners that i think will be helpful because we have covered a lot of information which is very good and there's more on the fabulous website um so credible resources obviously we're going invi to invite people to visit your website but how would someone determine what's credible in the rare disease space and what are your recommendations and thought on that that is a great question thanks rose we have to be savvy consumers of information that's available. And we have to recognize sort of the difference between what's a social resource and what's a medical resource, what's a clinical resource, okay. what's been vetted, what's valid, what has the science standing behind it. And so, again, Nord's website, rarediseases.org, really provides a robust compilation of vetted, scientific, valid resources. It provides a great starting point for you as you're looking for other resources, as you're looking for information. And so I find that the, the website is utilized oftentimes as a first point of contact as people begin their how do I live being rare? I've just been diagnosed. Where do I start? What does this breadcrumb trail look like? Use rarediseases.org. Use the website. It's a Thank great guide. So this has been very interesting, very helpful. And um, it seems like you had a very successful recent live event. And I know it's exciting to get back to live events. Um, and you have one coming up in the fall. And I'm sure it's going to be very successful. And it's so wonderful to have you as our guest today. And thank you to Nord and you and all of our listeners today. We have one more slide. One more slide after the thank you. 
<laughs> so this is my thank you again to Jill and to all of our listeners. Thank you for coming back every month. And I know some of you ask, uh, is this going to be available? Yes, it will be on COA's YouTube page. It's also on our Facebook page. Definitely share it. Use it for your own education with your own networks. We're, again, very proud of who we bring to you as guests. And next month, we're going to have a, a guest from Cancer Care. And we're going to be talking about the psychosocial impacts of cancer care. And as Jill mentioned today, um, this is going to include how cancer impacts children, caregivers, um, and extended family members. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your summer. And I'll say that again all throughout summer. Thank you for being with us today.